How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I wanted to talk about my time filming documentary style coverage with the Blue Copes during finals week. So for those that don't know, Drum Corps International is essentially a professional marching band at the highest level and the best way I can describe it is like the Netflix series Cheer where all these different teams are trying to perfect a 10 minute show over three months. Every organization is different but the Blue Coats were heavily focused on short form content designed for social media so here are a few pieces that I put together for them. A reminder, tonight is a huge, huge venue. Where we are standing right now is, is way too close for you to start, start communicating up to us. Everything is up and out. Fill up the stadium tonight. Yes! mindful of the bags and cases that I brought with me because space is precious when you're traveling on tour and you're also sharing a bus with a dozen other staff. In total, I ended up traveling with a suitcase, a tripod case, an AKS case in my Easy Rig, and also a Cartmaster to lug everything around. I had a camera case in my backpack as my carry-on and it looks like a lot, but it is pretty minimal when you break it down. It essentially boils down to a tripod, AKS, and an Easy Rig basically. One thing that always humbles me whenever I film drum corps is how outrageously organized and self-sufficient you have to be with your equipment on the road. Being on the road forces me to plan my day and use my time efficiently because I don't have a director or field producer guiding me throughout the day. I just have to figure it out on my own. One thing that really helped was using these nifty little cord bags which keep everything labeled and organized and I'd usually clip them together to have easy access to smaller items without having to break out my entire AKS case. For camera choice, I went with the FX9 because it's probably the most versatile camera I own and as much as I would have loved to bring the Alexa, it just wasn't the right tool for the job. I baked in my exposure indexes by using S-Log3 as my monitor LUT and then baking that into the internal recording. And since I was doing daily turnarounds, it was super helpful for me in post so that I was able to use one consistent grade across all my clips instead of trying to remember which clips were shot at specific EIs and matching different exposures. The only downside with this method is that you're stuck with monitoring and log unless you have an external monitor displaying a conversion light. I brought a bunch of my G Master lenses with me since they're easy to travel with and pair really well with the FX9. For the most part, I was using the 100-400, 14 1.8, and 50 1.2. 
The 100 to 400 gave me way more reach than a traditional 7200, which helped because media is only allowed to stand at a specific distance from the sideline during performances. And it does have a variable aperture at 4.5 to 5.6, but I just set the lens to a 5.6, so I maintained a consistent aperture throughout the entire range. And since I'm only filming during the day or inside the stadium with plenty of light, the 5.6 wasn't an issue at all. The 14 was actually the real MVP because of how much information it was able to capture with a full frame field of view. I was able to get right up to the members and basically embed myself in the action. I was also able to throw it on a smaller FX3 to use with an older glide cam setup to get these really dynamic action shots on the field that ended up being some of my favorite clips. It still feels a little bit like we're trying to tick the box. We're trying to do exactly what we were told, and we're at the point where we do that. Now we have to express, and we have to convey the emotion of this moment, yeah? It's not enough to tick the boxes anymore. We have to get this off of the field, and we have to convey a specific emotion. So some of you might be wondering why I chose to bring a glide cam as opposed to a newer, more modern gimbal, and that's mainly because of inertia. One of the reasons I think Steadicam systems feel much more organic over gimbals is because once you introduce any sort of pan, that movement continues without needing any additional input from the user. This is super important when I'm chasing after the drum core so that I can constantly scan the field and make sure that I'm not going to run into another member. Don't get me wrong, gimbals are great, but they're super precise electronic robots that are waiting for you to input its every move, and that's not what I wanted. Although gimbals and glide cams both assist with stabilization, they are two very different tools that give very different results, and they should be used in different situations. It's pretty neat merging older systems with modern tech, and it's also pretty wild seeing how much technology has changed in the past 10 years. The glide cam was actually my first bit of kit over 12 years ago, and back then there was no autofocus, so you had to set your focus and then maintain that distance for the entire shot. Now we have tiny little cameras that track your eyeballs, so that's pretty cool. Speaking of autofocus, it was pretty wild being able to use that tool to consistently nail action shots during the performances. The way I generally use autofocus is to leave the camera in manual focus on the camera side and then map the button on the lens to enable autofocus so that when I press it, it zaps to my subjects and I'll continue focusing manually. I jacked up all my autofocus settings to max speed and shift sensitivity since I primarily was concerned with acquiring critical focus as fast as possible. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. It's always fun coming back to drum core and seeing whether or not my abilities have scaled and watching how both the activity and camera technology have changed over the years. A big congrats to everyone over at Bluecoats. They ended up tying for second and winning drums. I had a blast the entire week and even though it was a ton of work, it really did feed the soul and it was just great being around the activity again. If you wanna see my full perspective from their finals run, I posted another video on the channel if you're interested in checking that out. Shout out to Scott Robertson for winning one of my Is That A Red stickers. So if you're watching, slide in my DMs and I'll send out a few stickers. If you want some for yourself, comment down below with hashtag Is That A Red and I'll pick a random comment. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.